Here we are, ladies and gentlemen. It's Monday night, and we're talking about a horror movie. Sorry, I was yeah. checking to see, make sure that the microphone was yeah, on. Yeah, making sure that damn. Because we keep moving shit yeah, around. Yeah, we're moving here. shit around. What is up with this? I don't know what. Okay, yeah, it's it's it's, it's, uh, it's even, I guess. <laughs> yeah, this fucking house, man. Because <laughs> we have all I this. I was fucking with the lighting and shit. Though. Yeah, you've been yeah. fucking with the lighting, so yeah. it's like we're moving stuff around everywhere. You know how we do. Yeah. It's not. It's never consistent from day to day. Yeah. But what are you going to do? What are we going to do? So, yeah. Um, I just happened to watch this movie. Did we watch it last night or the night before? No, I guess it wasn't last night. I guess it was the night before. Um, and I had actually been curious to see this. I'm not usually... I'm usually kind of ambivalent <clears throat> about horror remakes. Especially if it's a remake of something that's kind of a classic. But I was kind of curious to see this one. And I saw that it was on, I think it was on, uh, if you go on Amazon Prime, and sometimes it'll have those movies that are like freebie, and you can watch them with ads, and they are free. And so I saw that this one in there, and I was like, ah, might as well. I'm going to pull the trigger on it. And I will say that it got pretty mixed reviews at the time. But this was actually much better than I was expecting. I thought it was pretty good. Much better than I was expecting. Yeah. It's um it's similar enough to the original like the the bones of the story are the same but they did a little bit something different with it to kind of justify making a remake I guess. I mean the thing about it is that Rabbit we've covered the original Rabbit from 1977 um you know the David Cronenberg film and you know it's one of his early films I feel like um I don't like it as much as like The Brood, you know what I mean? No. Um, but it's still pretty good. And so it's, so it's not like you're taking something like Videodrome and remaking it, or yeah. you're just kind of taking one of his classics, but not his best one. You know what I mean? Like his older one and kind of updating it. So I didn't mind it as much. Although I think as far as I know, this might be, has anybody else remade a David Cronenberg movie? Or is this the first one? I don't know. <laughs> it's like, I can't really... I know David Cronenberg did a remake. He did The Fly. Um, but I yeah. can't think of anybody remaking a David Cronenberg movie just I offhand. Know. I mean, I feel like there's got to be ones other than this, but he's just such a singular filmmaker that I kind of feel like most people wouldn't have the audacity, I guess, because mm -hmm. his vision is so distinctive. But shit, if somebody remade Suspiria, I guess somebody can remake this too. But yeah, so this came out in 2019, was directed by uh, the Saska sisters, uh, Jen and Sylvia, who are twins, they're Canadian, and um, probably, they've made several movies, but um, I th they're probably their best known one is American Mary, uh, which was actually quite good. It's about um, extreme body modification, so it was like super gory. This one is not as gory as that one, but it was still pretty gory. So, like the original movie, because if you've seen the original movie, it had Marilyn Chambers, you know, the porn star. This was, like, her first, uh, like, mainstream role. Yeah. And she actually did a good job in this. Um, but this one, I like that they stuck with the Canadian, like, most of the actors are Canadian. Most of the, they shot it in Canada. Although they didn't, it doesn't have that super Canada-y kind of thing that David Cronenberg shit usually has. It does feel like a Cronenberg movie, though. It, it did. It did kind of. They and tonally it, it homaged, did. It homaged a yeah. bunch of them. Yeah. Um, I did. I did notice, and it was funny because I was watching a couple of other um, reviews of this, and I think some of the younger reviewers, because there's a scene in this that very obviously, I mean, very obviously, <laughs> homages Dead Ringers. Yeah. Uh, the 1988 David Cronenberg movie, like with the red surgical scrubs. Um, and, you know, they even like kind of reenacted the scene a little bit, like with the way that the, the so actors like moved. Ceremony. Right, right, right. And it's, and so a couple of, um, like one of the reviewers I saw, he looked like he was in his 20s or something like that. He liked the movie, but he was just like, he didn't understand. He was like, what was that random shit all about? <laughs> and, like, random. and somebody in the comments yeah. said, bro. Yeah. That's like that was from Dead Ringers. Yeah. So I think they also homage Shivers in there too. If I was, because there was a couple things in there that I was like, oh, I see what you did there. You know what I mean? So you could tell that the Saska sisters were really, I mean, they're big horror fans, they're big Cronenberg fans, and 
they made this respectfully. You know what I mean? I think it, it was good. I think it was a good. I uh, yeah, I actually quite liked it. I actually I, quite. I, liked I think it. it can stand with a Cronenberg flick. I think it's better than the original in the in in, in terms of like being updated. You know what I mean? The tone yeah. kind of updated because you know the original Rabbit is kind of crude by today's standards. Yeah, it was very low budget. It was Real one of his budget. earlier yeah. movies, you know. Yeah. So he didn't have a lot of money to work with. You could play this alongside, you know, Videodrome and uh, some of the newer Cronenberg movies that came out, like the one that came out with all the weird body, fucking horror shit. What was the one we saw in the theater? What oh, um, uh, oh shit! Now I can't remember what it was called. Yeah, where they were growing weird internal organs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Crimes of the Future. Crimes of the Future. Of the future. Yeah, it's was, it was like you know, not quite as odd as that, but. Yeah, it kind of felt like a like a modern Cronenberg movie. Yeah, in a way. Yeah. Um, yeah, but I mean, they do have their own distinctive style too. But like I said, I like the kind of little homages they put on there. Not just yeah. the Dead Ringers one, which was like screamingly obvious, but because that's probably I don't know if I'd say that's my favorite Cronenberg movie, but I really that's the one I've seen the most times. I like it a lot. Um, but I like that some of the shots they did, even though it's set in the present day, it seems like they did try to homage the look of the 1970s. Like, they'd go in places and it was, like, that cheesy paneling and shit like that. So I kind of like that they that they did that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, if you haven't seen the original Rabbit, um, it's basically like... It's not like... It's not zombies, but it's, you know, it's rabies. It's, a, it's like a viral outbreak type of movie, but weirder than that. So in the original movie, uh, the character of Rose, who is played by Marilyn Chambers... Um, she gets in a motorcycle accident and gets kind of, and it's near this like weird experimental clinic or whatever. And they pick her up and take her there and do, start doing like experimental skin grafts on her, like without her consent, really. Um, and as sometimes happens, she um, grows like a mouth in her armpit that is kind of like a vampire type thing where she kind of goes and like you know stabs people with it and then like drinks their blood but then it's like rabies so it passes from person to person and then like the whole thing kind of goes through and like she doesn't realize that she's essentially like patient zero you know what i mean because yeah. she isn't affected by it because she's kind of like the disease vector yeah they kind of make it a little more plausible too because they start getting into things like gene gene therapy and that's how it was done, it was done through genetic science yeah, and one thing that I thought was an interesting choice, and maybe this is because, I'm not entirely sure if this is maybe just because this was um, female filmmakers, um, the character of Rose in the remake has a lot more personal agency. Because in the original, she's in the motorcycle rack, she's unconscious, and they basically just scoop her up and throw her in the clinic and start doing shit to her like while she's unconscious, you know what I mean? In this one... Um, even though the kind of the events are the same, she actually chooses a lot of the things like she, so she's in this motorcycle accident, which actually it's not her fault necessarily, but it's because she's jumps on her motorcycle. She's not really looking. So it's kind of her fault a little bit, but then like after she's in the motorcycle accident accident, she actually gets taken to a regular hospital, but her face is all fucked up. And the uh, special effects I think are all practical and they look really, really good. Like, especially when her, when they take the bandages off her face and she's all like, her mouth is all fucked up and everything. So she ends up, like, after they release her from the hospital, she finds out about this transhumanism clinic um, that's called the Burroughs Clinic, which I think was an homage to William Burroughs, I'm assuming. Um, so she makes the choice to go there. You know what I mean? So it's not like she just got dumped in there without knowing about it she actually does go there and say yeah you can do the shit on me um you know because they're going to do the stuff on her for free and it actually takes a lot longer it's kind of a slower build i feel like i haven't seen the original in a while but i feel like the in the original it's just kind of like you know they go in they give her the skin grafts or whatever and then you pretty much see the armpit shit like not <laughs> not too far into it and then she just starts going around like seducing men and like sucking their blood or whatever in this one it's a lot more there's a lot more that happens like there's a lot more character development that happens like before the motorcycle accident so there's that because she's the the character of rose here they kind of portray was like this dowdy uh you know just very shy insecure kind of woman she works for a fashion house with this like stereotypical german arty farty 
like fashion designer douche. Um, and she wants to be a fashion designer, but she's not like confident. So it's it's kind of the classic because she's obviously like a beautiful woman, but they slap glasses on her, put like a frumpy sweater on her, and they're just like, yeah, she's a total wallflower. And I'm like, okay. So then like after they do the um, so there's a lot of that kind of shit. But then after they do the um the surgery on her, she actually like is completely healed and actually like looks better, even like fixes her vision and all this other kind of shit because they do all this gene therapy. And they kind of build up for a while that, because she was a vegetarian before, and then they give her these bottles of protein drinks, which I'm like, that's probably blood. Because you know that the dude that's running the clinic is totally into the, he's he knows what's going on. So it's like, yeah, you just have to drink these protein shakes. And then she starts having, like, cravings for raw meat. And then she just starts having these things where she you know, goes out, much like in the original movie, and just sees a dude and, like, kind of loses it and and kind of eats him a little bit, you know, just kind of bites his neck or whatever. They actually don't even show the armpit thing until probably about three quarters of the way through. And I think like in the original movie, because like I said, the original movie was pretty low budget. I think it was just, it was just like a slit and like a stinger kind of, like if I remember correctly. In this one, it's a full on tentacle, but you know, that comes like way out, but you don't really see it all that much until the end. But yeah, I mean, like I said, I'm not, I'm ambivalent about remakes, but I was kind of curious to see this one because I had liked American Mary, which is the only other Saskia Sisters movie that I've seen. Um, they get a lot of shit for whatever reason. I don't really know why, but, um, but honestly, if you're gonna, if you're gonna remake a Cronenberg movie, uh, I think this was a really good attempt like I said, it's similar enough to the original and has homages to the original, but they changed the story up enough to kind of put their own spin on it. You know what I mean? Which is really all you can do. They didn't try to slavishly remake it. They didn't try to make it exactly like a Cronenberg movie. You know, they put their own style on it. Also, I laughed because the um, Jen and Sylvia Saska also were cameos in this as these kind of coke snorting bitches like at this party yeah. <laughs> like they were they were talking about the main character like what a sad pathetic <clears throat> bitch she was so uh so i thought that was very funny that they put themselves in there i don't know if that's something that they do all the time but <coughs> but yeah i mean i thought it was pretty good yeah i mean i thought it was yeah. pretty good too yeah. um the ending was Kind, was actually kind of it was a lot different than the original like a spoiler alert if you haven't seen the original one from 1977 um basically rose dies at the end of the original one and the the thing about it that's that makes the ends kind of devastating is that they don't know that she was patient zero that she was the one that started it and she basically just gets hauled out of her apartment like thrown in a garbage truck or something like that like along with the other bodies like they don't know that she was the one that started it um which you know was kind of which was kind of a, a depressing ending but it was kind of a cool ending too this one i don't necessarily want to spoil the ending but this one takes like a a far different tack because I think that in the original, if I remember correctly, and if anybody has seen it more recently than I have, maybe you can, like, remind me. But I thought in the original that, yeah, they were doing weird shit with, uh, with genetics and all that other kind of stuff at the clinic, the keloid clinic. But the, the mouth and the armpit, that was, like, an unintentional side effect of the skin grafts. I don't think they actually meant to do that. Whereas in this, um, it seems like the clinic is a lot more sinister in their intentions. You know what I mean? Like they are actually trying to, or like the guy that's running it is actually trying to like, I don't think he was necessarily trying to cause a rabies outbreak, but I mean, he was definitely trying to do something along those lines. So he, <laughs> so it wasn't like, oh my God, we messed up this thing and you know, all hell broke loose. He was just kind of like, oh, interesting. You know what I mean? So I think he was kind of had more nefarious intentions you know um faded line said this one is a remake yes it is um as i mentioned yeah this is a remake of a david cronenberg movie from 1977 and um that pretty good i mean it was pretty good like i said i think on rotten tomatoes i think i saw it had like 56 percent like, so that's kind of mixed reviews. And when I saw, like, I, I read and, like, looked at several different reviews. And it seemed to, like, there was a couple of horror reviewers that I liked that really did not like it. Um, I don't really know why it didn't seem that offensive or, <laughs> you know what I mean? 
Um, but then some people, most people thought it was like, yeah, it was pretty good. Um, you know, depending on if you saw the original, I don't know. I'm still going to give it to the original because it's Cronenberg and he has his own thing going on. But honestly, if you're going to remake it and update it for 2019, you could have done a lot worse. And I don't know. I, I pretty much dug it. I thought it was like pretty cool. And I actually even liked the ending, even though it's a lot different than the original. Because I do like the original ending too. But yeah, so... Do you have anything else you'd like to add about it? No. Uh. This is like the shortest review ever. Yeah. <laughs> now what do you want to talk about? <laughs> what do you want to talk about now? Because no, some people just got here. <laughs> yeah. How long have we been? How long have we been on? We've only been on for twenty, 20 minutes. minutes. Okay. We've only been on for twenty minutes. Mm. So. Yeah. What are we gonna do? Nothing. You can just end it. <laughs> I had all I could say about it, you know what I mean? It was, again, it was just it was just a flick. It's a cool flick. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I mean I quite yeah. liked it. I quite liked it. Didn't make me mad or anything. <laughs> <laughs> that that's Tom's criteria. Yeah. You're right. For like shit like that. But yeah, um so I feel bad that it like didn't take that long to like talk about this movie. That's how it is. But you know what I mean. Yep. Um, but yeah, it's Monday night. Tomorrow is my birthday. I'm turning fifty one tomorrow. Yep. And uh, you know, going to going to Disney. Yep. Go tomorrow going to Disney yep. for the Halloween thing and then Wednesday I'm going to Epcot. So if you guys weren't here, I mentioned on Friday that the regular show this week, which is actually gonna be about creepy internet mysteries, um, that's gonna be we're gonna move it to Thursday night because I'm actually not entirely sure like what time I'm gonna be getting back home on Wednesday and it probably won't be in time to do the show at the regular time. And I'll probably be worn out. So we were, we're going to push the regular show back to Thursday night at 7.30 Eastern Standard Time. So um, back Wednesday evening? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Because, I'm, like I said, I don't, I'm going with my siblings, and I'm yeah. not really sure how late they're going to want to stay. Mm -hmm. Like, Because I think Epcot's open until 9, so I don't know if we're going to stay there until then or if we're going to get worn out before then. I don't, I don't really know what's going to happen. But it'll be so... Don't start getting worried unless I'm not back before like 10 or yeah. 11 at night. You got like, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to have my phone yeah. and stuff like that. Um, okay, so a couple people asked some questions. Uh, Camp Guy said, I believe the most common carriers of rabies are raccoons and bats. Yeah, I've heard that as well. Um, let's see. Uh, Tammy says, I wanted to wish you a happy birthday early and hope you have fun at Disney. Thank you very much. I'm planning to. I think it'll be fun. Like I said, we, me and my sister went to the Halloween event last year and it was like super fun. So we're doing the same one again. And I haven't been to Epcot in forever, so it'll be nice to go see it. And let's see. Uh, Jenny and Tom, are you guys ever going to do a retrospective of Sleepaway Camp? Honestly, <laughs> I thought we had already done it. But I, first, I don't know why, but I was thinking about it the other day. Oh, I think because I saw it when I was scrolling through the movies. I don't think I've ever seen it. And I was like, shit, I don't think we've ever seen it. We've ever done. I've seen it a couple of times, but um, I don't remember ever doing. Uh, I don't even think I've ever seen it. You might like it. It's like yeah. it's from the '80s. It's kind of like a like a camp slasher, but with a twist, I guess. Okay. I don't want to. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah, know what yeah, I'm yeah, talking about. Yeah. Like I said, if you haven't seen it, yeah. I don't want to spoil the ending for you. Yeah, I've seen. It. Even though as as soon as you started watching it, you would probably yeah. remember, like, because yeah. the the images the at the end is like super iconic. That's yeah. one of like the most iconic endings, like in all of horror, like especially that that one shot of, yeah. of that character. You know what I mean? I'm trying to like, I know, I know people probably know what it is, but I'm trying to like dance around it. You know what I mean? Tammy says, gonna miss Thursday. Might be able to sneak in to say hi, but Eddie Izzard starts at 8 PM. Oh, that's right. Yeah. That's on the Thursday night. So yeah, you're not going to be able to make it. Well, you're going to be seeing Eddie Izzard. So oh, Danny, really ghost face is back. Yeah. Hey, uh, where I, have you been? Yeah. We tried to answer your message a long time ago. Um, you weren't blocked from this channel. There's a lot of people that can't post. For some reason, we don't know what it is. Remember? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a long right. time ago. He's like, I can't. I could, he couldn't see the. He couldn't post in the live stream. Yeah, you're not the only one. And I'm not. Yeah, and I'm not really sure. Yeah. Like nobody, nobody is blocked. Yeah. Nobody, no, nobody is blocked. I, yeah. I went and looked, and there's not a single blocked yeah. person, like that's, in my in my shit. Yeah, my understanding is is that uh, uh, AI, if you've been. If AI doesn't like the shit that you've been saying on other programs, they can fucking silence you in, in live stream. That may be what it is. Is that Thunder? Yeah. Holy shit. Yeah. 
Danny Rowling says, Tom should totally see Book of Shadows, Blair Witch 2, just saying. You know, I haven't seen it in a while, but I, just from what I remember, I would go to bat for Blair Witch 2. I know it gets shit on a lot, like people saying it's like a terrible sequel and stuff like that. I remember quite liking it. I like that they did something, they didn't do found footage, they kind of like went a little bit meta with it. And like I said, I'd be curious to see it again because it's probably been 15 years at least since I've seen it. But I remember enjoying it and being like not really understanding all the, all the hate that it gets. So I don't know. I might watch it again and be like, oh, now I get it. <laughs> I don't know. Because I was like a different person back then. But I remembered like kind of liking it. Like I said, I liked that they went meta. John Gora said, I liked The Burning better. Sleepaway Camp does have a freaky finale. Yeah, The Burning is good too. Um, that was one, I, I remember seeing that one a lot because Tom Savini worked on it. And, uh, you know, I had all those like documentaries about Tom Savini and they always had shots from that. But wasn't that, The Burning was the one that had all the later famous people in it, wasn't it? Like Holly Hunter and Jason Alexander and stuff like that. Was it, That's what I'm thinking of, right? That's, yeah, I'm, I think that's what I'm thinking of. But yeah, it was one of those old slashers that had, like, people that became massively famous later on in, like, their first roles. Um, let's see. Do, do, do. <laughs> Camp Guy said, believe it or not, one of the most dangerous things outdoors and camping is falling trees. Hmm. Lots of folks get killed by trees. You know, what's weird, it reminded me, it's like when I was in Wales, they told me that right down the street from where I was living... There had been this car full of people just driving by and just freakily there wasn't a storm or anything like this tree just fell and it fell in their car and killed all of them damn and i was just like can you imagine just like fucking i guess that you gotta storm sounds like it's gonna get serious huh? I, it really does it's yeah. getting really really loud. Look out the window. <laughs> it's getting really really loud <laughs> really loud yeah. yeah american military 100 said the burning is awesome yeah it's really good uh, yes, Holly Hunter. Oh, yeah, Fisher Stevens is in it, too. I forgot all about that. And wasn't Jason Alexander in it? I want to say Jason Alexander was in it. But holy crap. Holy Three crap. Cats and dogs out yeah, there. I don't know if you can hear that, but holy shit. It just went... Yeah, it just... Sky just spl exploded. Fucking Florida, man. It's yeah. crazy. Florida, man. Yeah. All right. So, you seem not to want to talk. <laughs> oh, yeah. I have anything to talk about. Okay. I have to talk about. So I guess we're going to wrap it yeah. up. Yeah. She's going to blame it on me. That the show well, I'm just saying. It. It's like sometimes. <laughs> sometimes you already talk about something and then we can like start talking about something, but you don't seem to like want yeah. to talk about anything. Yeah, it's the topic, you know. That's well, that's true. Like yeah. I said, you can go up in a I'm not really chest. into this topic that much. I mean, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, you can talk about other shit if you want nah, to. Nah, that's off topic. Uh, okay. Well, we already talked about the movie, though. Yeah, we talked about the movie. So it's okay. Mm. All right, so I guess we're going to wrap it up. Uh, and then, remember, we're not going to be back until Thursday night, so try not to miss us too badly. So I'm going to be doing birthday shit tomorrow and Wednesday, so hopefully that'll be fun. Hopefully the weather's not like this tomorrow. That would suck. I don't want to have to drive in it. But, yeah. So uh, we'll see you guys again on Thursday night, and thank you for dropping by this evening, and we'll see you then. Bye.